met you. Yes. Uh, good evening, and I'll call the meeting of the Blackstone Millville Regional District School Committee to order Tuesday, February 4th. It's just a budget workshop. So uh, before, though, we did have unexpected news come in today. So I will turn it over to Dr. DeFalco to share some very exciting news with us. Yeah, so actually, uh, thank you, Ms. Reggio. So, uh, Mr. Dudek, if you want to join us quickly up front, actually, you may as well stay there, too, because uh, you're going to be presenting <laughs> in a moment. But... Um, Mike and I can share some of the good news together. As the committee knows, uh, we have been, uh, with the high school team, very hard at work on a Project Lead the Way grant, uh, $70,000 grant to open for the first time a biomedical pathway at uh, our very own BMR. And Mr. Dudek, do you want to share the news? Sure. So we went through, uh, we had a long leadership team review meeting. We went through the application. We actually did some site visits at uh, some schools up north to see what um, what kind of pathways uh, was going on. So we got together as a team, and there was two parts to the application process. Uh, the first was just the initial. Um, in order for us to be able to apply, we got through the stage one. Uh, we wrote the grant. Um, it wasn't that long ago. Mm -mm. It's almost no. maybe about a month, yep. month and a half ago. Yep. Um, together as a group for stage two, articulated what we were looking to do, our partnerships, uh, within the Valley, uh, we asked for the max amount of $70,000 to start. Um, it's a three year grant um, for that position or for that program. And today we received an email that we got $70,000 to start Project Lead Away. So, yeah, we're excited. I mean, this is yeah. something we've been talking about for quite some time, but it, it came through, and I'm really excited to. Um, share that news with the community, with staff, with students, and I, I really feel like this is going to take us um, closer to where we want to go um, as a school, as a district, as a community. So uh, uh, timing was just perfect. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, congratulations Thank to you. you and your Thank team, you. and that's amazing news. I'm yes. personally a favorite field of mine, so mm -hmm. I'm even more excited back that up we're working on a about a hundred thousand dollar grant for career exploration for the middle school and we'll be submitting that uh, at the end of February and we'll hopefully have a fairly quick turnaround in here soon after about that so a lot of really great opportunities happening in the career um, uh, career readiness uh, field for us in BMR and tonight is the first night of our advanced manufacturing two class Ooh. and we have four students for the five that are continued five. on That's yep good that, that successfully completed Advanced Manufacturing 1 and are taking Advanced Manufacturing 2. They start tonight. So really, really good, uh, really great stuff going on at the high school. And so you probably need some money. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Not a whole lot. No. Okay. No. <clears throat> All right. Are we well, ready to? Yeah, we're ready. Ready to roll. All right, Ms. Kirk, do you want to join us as, uh, as well up front here? And so uh, last Thursday, we heard from our elementary uh, principals, or cost center managers, as uh, Matt refers to them. And this evening, we are going to be talking and, uh, with and speaking with our secondary principals that are going to talk a bit about uh, just the really great programming that we have in store for our students for next year and how we are leveraging uh, or hope to leverage the FY21 budget to align with our, uh, our academic program and our non-academic supports for that matter to help our students be successful uh, in both the middle and high school. And so you'll see a little bit of a different format than you did the other um, evening, but one that uh, should be familiar to you. Uh, and we're going to be looking at uh, a side-by-side -side chart of the school year 1920, which is FY20, compared to school year 2021. Um, and we'll be looking at um, existing materials and staff compared to new materials and staff and the rationale behind all of that. And I know that these workshops are really helpful uh, because although, you know, there, certainly you no know, decisions are made during these conversations, um, the idea is to help inform uh, the public and of course inform the committee um, so that when we start prioritizing uh, all the information that we uh, need, we will have. And so uh, with all that, I will turn it over to Ms. Kurt and Mr. Dudek. I wasn't sure about the clicker, so <laughs> I got it to the right slide. Um, 
So the, the first piece that we have is just some of the um, technology, technology subscriptions. So the teachers were absolutely elated to have the IXL for English and math this year. And because of that district-wide, they did offer us 90-day trial runs. Um, and so the middle school staff was uh, the science, the history, and the Spanish teacher was very excited to try that for the 90 days. So um, I know that Mr. Aaronworth is looking into that. I don't know if we would get it, but that is something that we that the middle school teachers are looking forward to. Um, they did use it quite a bit for that 90-day trial. <clears throat> um, the other piece that we were looking for was Edpuzzle Pro. So what Edpuzzle does is it does, the teachers are using it a lot, but they only can do 10 videos. So it allows you to, if you're showing a short video to students, that it, it forces it to stop and they'd have to actually interact with what they had just seen, answering questions and you will sign it out like it's a Google Classroom assignment. Um, and free, it allows you to do 10 of them, but then if you need to do more than that, you have to erase what you have and then have to recreate that again. Um, so that subscription would be for the, all the teachers in the middle school that be able to have access to unlimited times of making the videos. So that, can I just ask a question? Is yeah. that for all subjects or is that specifically that every science, single or? Anyone who, if it's a YouTube video, you want to use it, you can put it up there and there's also a lot of them that are already pre-done that you can review okay. see how the questions are tweak the questions that other teachers have already so made. you can create one or you can use an already Correct. created one. yep mm -hmm. yeah. pretty cool so. I think I yeah I helped with my son the other night yeah <laughs> oh, you I was like, yeah did I see that <laughs> any, any teacher is welcome to make them yeah. except yeah. unfortunately the free version only gets you up to 10 videos and, and because they have to the, one of the standards is interacting with different medias yeah. it, it's really important that they are able to interact with yeah so they get the video on their Chromebook mm -hmm. it stops in the middle of the video and you can't move on move. until you put in an answer and it tracks the answer and gives that data back to the teacher hence why my son wanted to sit on the side of me and say mom is this right I didn't watch the video <laughs> I'm watching you <laughs> but it's any subject or anything yeah, on you, YouTube or Correct, whatever. yes. Um, the, other, the other piece here for brain prop is we didn't have that for the middle school, um, but then the science teachers had put that into their curriculum. So there are times in the curriculum where they needed access to some of the brain pop videos that you could only get with a subscription. Um, the next one is also for eighth grade. So Jognog is a subscription that I looked in to see if it was different than IXL, and it, and it is. It's a, it's a lot of review before the eighth grade science test that they could have of questions that are on the MCAS that they could be practicing, um, which, because you get very few limited amounts from DESE ourselves to practice. Um, so the two, $220 is for two teacher licenses, plus all the students would be able to access it. <clears throat> for extracurriculars, um, I don't know if it was in there before I came to the district, but since I've been to the district, we've had a STEM club, but we haven't had the cost to run the STEM club. I've had to try to find ways to fundraise, PTO help pay for us. So we're looking to um, have these costs included because there really isn't anything with the STEM club if you can't go and compete with them. So the, we do two competitions. We do the Lego competition where the students didn't make it to the final round, but they um, almost did the year before. Um, and so those, I have it all broken down here. Mrs. Grace was very helpful in breaking it exactly down so you know exactly how much. Um, and we want to be able to take two teams and not just one. This year we only did one due to the funding. Um, because then that limits us to only like six kids. So we kind of had an in-house competition to decide who would then go to the final competitions. And then the other one in the springtime, what they do is they do the Worcester Polytech bottle rocket competition, and that's the cost to be part of that. Rocket launchers? Yeah. Um, the next thing that I was looking for is this past year we added um, for our intervention materials language live for 7th and 8th grade at 40 seats total. So 20, 20 seats or um, 40, 20 seats per grade. 
And then what we were looking to do is to increase that with um, grade six, because um, I did not have that support in place for the students in grade six. And we are using those and placing students that are in the bottom 25 or our lowest readers. Anyone had any? What does that do? What does Language Live do? Language Live is a middle school created, it's created for middle schoolers and intervention with reading. So they get, it's a print version and an online version and the teacher can push out um, materials, assignments, but they do pieces that are in the print book and online too. And, and on the 11th, uh, next week, I'll have a full update for the committee and all of our ed tech using yep, programs, usage, impact. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So we'll be able to take a really good that look at all helpful. that. Yeah. The language, live in the, the language live in the VMATH we use during every intervention period. So it's been used all year during our intervention period, every single day. Um, for the rotation classes, we, I was looking for... Uh, last year, the wellness teacher really didn't need any new supplies, but unfortunately, our wellness teacher is retiring this year. Um, so I wanted to be able to have some supplies for the new person that comes in in case they needed anything. And then for physical education, we're always trying to find new ways to have different kinds of opportunities for students in, in PE. And so he was wanting to add a youth bowling set. And so we could actually ha do some bowling and then integrate math with that and how to score and how to how that all works. Um, because he's consistently trying to find ways to integrate literacy and math into our um, physical education class, and it's all not just about sports. Are you using Nuzella? Are you going to use Nuzella? Is that going to be a district-wide? It's it's we have district that well. now, so it wasn't okay. anything new, anything but, new? and yes, okay. we do have, we yeah, use that. Yeah. Okay. That's um, for sixth grade and up. So okay. my, my students, uh, my, everyone has it at the high school and at the middle school. And it'll be in the report next week. Okay. Um, for the new staff, the only thing that I was looking for was a, a history teacher for two teaching periods, which is a .4 history teacher due to the class sizes that will be in grades six and eight next year. Um, so right now, if you look at the amount of students we have that will be going into seventh and eighth grade, it would be about 301 students. And I currently only have two teachers teaching, so at five periods each. So that's 10 teaching periods. That would be over 30 kids in a class. Um, Can I ask a question? On yes. That so are we still doing humanities? Mm -hmm. That was in sixth grade. This, yeah. is, this is for seventh, seventh and eighth, eighth this grade. This is for seventh and eighth. But we're staying with humanities for next year in sixth. Yeah, as a matter of fact, if you looked at class size, uh, this year our mm -hmm. class size are about 143. Next mm -hmm. year we're at 125. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I have an outgoing class of 126. I have an incoming class of 125. Oh, and so, so you're numbered, yeah. <laughs> So that what happens that so if you look down below under grade eight, the incoming class sizes, I let you know that the incoming sixth grade is going right now is about 125, seventh grade's 143, and the eighth grade's 158. So even without the influx, this summer we had about 10 new students come in for seventh grade. So that that is my concern of already starting out with 30 kids in the class. And with these six teachers, uh, with the sixth graders next year it ends up being it's about 20 kids in a class so having adding two more to that to separate those out is you know, not real but it's, it's not just feasible. a point four it's just okay is that easy to find <laughs> for history it will be easy it'll be easier <laughs> it won't than be difficult. math or science yeah. <laughs> math or science i, I wouldn't even <clears throat> think hard. of asking that because it will be impossible to find somebody but there's a lot of history teachers out there So that will be a new a new body. There's not someone working. Not real. I have a wellness right teacher, and I have uh, the humanities. Mrs. Adams is also retiring, so you know I don't know if there would even be any new money in that. You're saying like with salary savings, we, we could probably make up the difference. That's what I'm hoping for. for. But yes, um, to your point, Erin, it would be that's a new. It's person. a point. For, it's, it's a, a new true point, point four. four. That's correct. Mm -hmm. And is that, is that um, a continue, will that be a continuation? Or are you hoping that it, that point for long term? Are we looking at that long term or are we just looking at that for next year? Well, if you look at the fourth grade, there's 165 it, yeah, students right. in fourth grade. So I, I'm so, not sure about, okay. you know. Okay, that was my, uh -huh. that was my question. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> 
It would, become, it would probably become a, a 1.0. It wouldn't, we wouldn't eliminate it. Depends. Well, they might have to add the, cl it the class sizes in our district are really kind of unique. There really is this like a fairly healthy fluctuation yeah. year to year that makes it really tricky to. Yeah. I just know a few years ago we did some big cuttings in the history. In history. Yeah, in history. And I just, if we're looking for a 0.5, I'm sure they're going to say, well, what's the potential down what's the road? The Potential down the road, so I that's what that led me to my question. But you, yeah. I mean, 165 coming from is, fourth grade, from fourth, is, is I mean, good that's, potential. Still, that's good potential. That's mm -hmm. good potential. So, with the with the students that are in the seventh and the eighth grade next year, there would be um, so it's kind of what your discussion right now. I have one history teacher, Mr. DeWolf, that's pretty much teaching all of grade seven. Mr. Kylie's teaching up one period, and Mrs. Finnegan's teaching all of grade eight, the civics. So, with this shift of the students, so I have that eighth grade class right now of 126 students that I created a schedule so that they could all be on one team, but that I can't do that with so five teaching periods 158 and 143. So um, I know my second year here, we had a split team, which is, is not like the split classroom. The students are not mixed. Um, however, there were some things because I didn't fully understand some of the aspects of the schedule being new. Um, and so Mrs. Dansro was um, very gracious in that at the end of that, she kind of put some of the things that if we could improve on that, it would make it much a much better experience for the staff and the students um, and so I've been working with her to figure out what to be able to do this in a better way than it happened the first time do we have two full teams for each grade this year no mm -hmm. there's one team in eighth grade there's two in seventh and then the two and six our teams are three so if you look at the existing staff on the left hand side I laid out for you in the sixth grade those are the the six teachers that we have um, and then in seventh grade there are two English two science and math and the history but one period of that is thank you I forgot to move that over um, one period is being taught by mr. Kylie and then eighth grade you have the four teachers that are teaching the eighth graders but so sixth grade actually is three teams is that two teams two teams of three two teams of three, two teams of three. But you'd almost shift it where yeah we, and we've had we two had teams and six would have one my first year here we had six teams in the school and then we had the the budget cr cr um, right mm -hmm. i don't want to say crunch i'm mm. forgetting my yes. word right now <laughs> anyways we were de Reduction. decreased down to five teams and that's what we have right now so is there still a full hallway closed like pretty no much lockers no rooms are being used uh, Mrs. Grace is down there. She's using the science room in the science lab. That's where our STEM technology goes. But the other three rooms down the hall are not being used. We've been using one of those as the uh, district PLC room. Uh, the kids don't have lockers there. No, well. I don't have staff to be able to watch over over there. So in, so in this model for next year, there would be two teams at grade six mm -hmm. that have three teachers each, so the humanities the science and the math mm -hmm. then you would have a seventh grade team a seventh eighth grade split team and an eighth grade team correct okay but the oh, split okay. team would have equal <clears throat> amounts of two seventh, seventh and eighth teams. graders the seventh grade would have one full team of four teachers yes one and then be then there'd be one seventh eighth grade split team correct which i would try to have that extra history person would most likely be the history teacher because right now Mr. DeWolf is the seventh grade history teacher. Right. And then and one then eighth, eighth grade? grade. Correct. With with each team having about a hundred students on them. So, so you've the, oh I'm sorry, please Aaron. I apologize. Go ahead. The seventh eighth split would have how many teachers? Three teachers plus hopefully if it was at I'll that folder. point for history yeah and then eighth grade team is three and one three and one photo or is it four it is four. it's a full team mm -hmm. yes since i've been here we've never had a 
full team with when you really if you really looked at the history positions we never really because even when mr hook was with us and it looked like it had full teams he was also still sport. teaching another grade so mm -hmm. history was sport. his history has been short since i've been here and maybe before me i don't i don't know the before me <laughs> Any other questions? I like how this is spread out, and I, I, I appreciate the conversation between each subject because it sounds like you're very familiar with what the teachers are needing. Um, in terms of, we used to get it broken down by just this is what the middle school needs, and so it's really hard to understand the why behind this is what they need. Um, so I, I appreciate the breakdown of looking at the last year and this year and specifically speaking to the needs of each of the subject areas. So thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. So high school. I'll help you out. Thank you. So my, my hope and goal for today in terms of this conversation at this, that, that this is feels like a continuum of last year in terms phase of our, two. our what's that phase two phase two correct <laughs> so I'm I'm hearing sensing the, the you know a relative theme in terms of what are um, our priorities um, so again last year we were talking about the so what now what uh, with the focus on improving our curriculum uh, our resources defining our instructional focus and methods developing awareness of whole child so again this to me is just a we're, we're back to last year and just a, a continuum of that. And I'm, I'm hoping that that's what you feel when we think about some of the topics and themes of the materials that are requested, um, not only at the high school, but uh, at the middle and elementary school. So when we started developing um, or getting into a conversation about this year next and, and really getting into some programs and areas of study, um, we were really thinking about how do we <coughs> truly prepare our kids um, our students for college and career and community and we talked about building uh, specific pathways uh, increasing the rigor um, in all of our classrooms and really just raising the bar for all students and I, I really need to go and stress that that's for all students um, luckily um, we were able to have a, a budget that was supported by the committee and the community so we appreciate everything that we received last year um, and that's only benefited us um, this year with our students and I'm I'm pretty confident that that will also in our accountability uh, ratings with DESE um, so in terms of some themes that you'll hear today um, you know I just wanted to throw some bullet points so one is talking about supports and interventions for our kiddos uh, two, looking at electives, specific pathways, areas of study, real-world application. Uh, another focus is looking at the increased level of rigor and aligning our resources and our curriculum, uh, particularly uh, when we're looking at our literacy and ELA. Uh, we're also thinking about collaboration and reflection with our teachers, so giving them that time uh, within the school day to be able to collaborate in PLC and, and other team time. Professional development has really come um, to, to play in a, in a lot of this, and I'm, I'm really excited to see that some of our departments have said, I'd love to be able to go to a conference. I want to go to a workshop. There's something that's coming up that's going to really benefit uh, our department and our students. So you'll see that um, in some of the items. And then lastly, thinking about some of the supplies, instructional materials, resources, um, how does that help support um, our students when we're thinking about creating problem solving, manipulating um, information, um, and so forth. So that, I just want to lay that out um, in the beginning um, in terms of some of the materials. The left side of the column is the existing materials that we received um, last year, um, and then new materials on the right. So the first, first piece I, I, I wanted to highlight was the project Lead the Way Curriculum and Supplies. Um, so we did not know that we were going to be receiving a grant until this afternoon, which was just phenomenal news to hear. Um, so that's $70,000 that will be grant funded for three years. Um, and that, um, for, for our idea, is that it, that will help us uh, be able to implement three of the courses out of the four, and then we can go and reapply for another grant for a sustainable partnership to look at that fourth, uh, fourth course for the following year. Um, the grant 
um, applies to all uh, um, consumables, but not the durables. Um, so that is something that we just need to think about. So we did put $10,000 in district costs um, that we will be looking for um, to be able to help support the materials that are there. Um, Clearly, I can't hit that link, and I don't have it in front of me. But you, you would be able to see the list of, of materials that um, are pretty well in depth for all of the courses there. Um, the first course that we would be looking at um, to run for next year, uh, again, and there's a four four course pathway. It's a Principles of Biomedical Science, um, and I'll, I'll just quickly read what that um, the description of that course is. It's by engaging in activities like dissecting a sheep heart, students explore concepts of biology, medicine determined factors that led to the death of a fictional person. So there's real world application problem solving, and a lot of hands on um, pieces and elements to that. And we've identified one of our teachers in our science department that is willing, able, and interested okay. to take that on with no additional cost because we could we could fit that right into our, our science department. Um, so that's exciting news. Um, Mike, do you want? Do you have the rest of the uh, pathway there? Sure. So you the the, the, the rest of that? the pathway. So the cool. second course um, is a human body system. So through projects such as determining the identity of a skeleton through forensic uh, forensic anthropology and DNA analysis, students examine the inter interactions of human body systems and apply what they know to real world medical cases. Uh, the next one is medical interventions. So students delve into activities like designing a prosthetic arm as they follow the life of a fictitious family, investigate how to prevent, diagnose, and treat disease. And then the last one to me I think is, is what's going to be really unique um, for our building in terms of building partnerships uh, within our community and getting our students out is a biomedical innovation course. So that's going to be outside of the classroom. So students build on the knowledge and skills gained from previous courses to, to design their own innovative solutions for the most pressing health challenges of the 21st century. So that's a, a real world case study um, and um, several schools have just been able to build yeah. fantastic partnerships with hospitals, mm -hmm. biotech firms, um, and that's, that's something that we're gonna be looking to do, but that would be a four year process. Mm -hmm. Um, and we would hopefully be able to write and uh, receive a grant to be able to um, build that biomedical innovation. So the $70,000 will pay for materials, cost, professional development. This is a two week PD in the summer for this teacher, um, all day, every day. Um, so it's a huge commitment, but there's a, there's a, there's a lot that's going to go into that. Um, and the $70,000 will cover majority of that uh, with the exception of that. The, 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 the consumables, but that's not going to be a lot. Um, in so, terms is of it ten thousand every year of the three years of the grant, or is it ten thousand so this year? So, we weren't entirely sure of right. how much we would receive, so we put in a ten thousand dollar for this uh, year. For this year, um, I, I don't think that would be a ten thousand dollar per year. Okay. We would have to look truly to see how much do we truly need to build that sure. one course with the durables. Um, with money. with the grant money that we received, and so. then this is targeted then for for freshmen. This um, so we um, if it's four years through the application we we wrote up what that could possibly look like in terms of building that cohort. I, ideally, we would like to have a cohort in three years where it's a true eight to ninth grade coming in. Yeah. But for the first year, first two years, we would open that up to any students that want to go and take on that course um, as an elective. But once again, being able to establish that cohort model where we have students that are coming in, they get into that pathway of biomedical, they complete the four years, plus some uh, additional AP courses, get the distinction through that, get the internship experience, and be well on their way um, to bigger and better things. But within the first couple of years, what schools have been, have been doing was, using it as a general science electives for those just students that are interest. interested, mm -hmm. just to get that interest yep. and be able to get that buy-in because we're not gonna be able to find a, most likely a cohort of 25 freshmen. And at the same time, I can understand where families are saying, well, my kid's a junior, he wants to get into this. I wanna get him into at least one of these courses we'll or two yeah. yep. prior to graduation. But within three years, we'd like to have that natural cohort of students to get into that. Okay. So with that being said, how how will you fit it into the schedule? Because there are 
as freshmen and sophomore, there was not as much room in their schedule for an elective per se mm -hmm. um, as a junior or senior. But that's that is correct. That's a good question. Um, I we need to. I think in particular for students that have a chosen elective. So I think the conflict that we're going to have is if students are choosing music or band, there truly isn't another opening for them because they're taking P, PE but and foreign PE, language. PE, the two PEs can be done junior, senior, technically. So, Technically, yes. So I mean, te I, I technically, a foreign language could the also. Music kids yeah. Because if you if <laughs> if that happens, the, depending on where it ends up scheduling, yep. you know the the music kids are restricted to one period, yep. and they're the ones that typically don't have that elective. So, in the in the ninth and tenth grade, mm -hmm. and then I mean I, and then they're taking two sciences too. So that's another as a ninth grader because they're taking, usually taking biology as yeah. a ninth grader mm -hmm. and testing at MCAS at the end of the year. So that might be top heavy for some of them it, it just might. in that year. So I, I And that's something I that we looked at and tried to, we, we, we looked at that analysis of, well, where does this fit into the master schedule? Yeah. How does that look like in terms of electives or coursework? We also looked at, can this, these courses replace <coughs> chemistry or biology huh? course? Mm -hmm. And right now we haven't found any schools that said, Absolutely, this is a nice fit. It, this is almost supplemental to that bio course, and and I understand that there's gonna there's conflicts, and I think we need to go and look at um, where courses are offered, and why do they have to happen in fresh. I mean, typically, yeah. freshmen are taking Spanish one or Spanish two bio, uh, you know, in, in their first two years. That may, I mean, that's a conversation that we need to have as a as a department and as a community. Does PE wellness have to happen in the first two years? does I mean I really does I, I think you'll have some flexibility with the PE because the problem they is do people go out year. senior year what people go to internships mm -hmm. senior year so they well that, the meet the guidelines the on the is, PE uh, other schools and districts are already doing this so yes. people have yep. fit four years of this program yeah. into into their system is it an elective it's about choices others comes other down to choice there's only so many periods and right. so <laughs> the school that we went to and I'm forgetting Danvers High, Danvers school. High school we we walked into they have three of the pathways so they have ah. computer science um, there's they started biomedical or biotech yep. um, and then they were looking at I think the manufacturing the manufacturing yeah. pathway we want to be able to just look at one for now sure. and see where that can go. Yeah. <laughs> we'll start we'll start small. But uh, a lot of the students that we walked into, it was their second year in and they were it was a senior or junior elective for first for students. Question. Yeah. Was it is it an elective in the where they're running it as a true pathways? They they were not at that point. Okay. So they're just Our vision is in three years that it's a true that pathway yep. where st incoming freshmen are coming in, yep. they're identified, they want to take the biomedical, they want to get into the manufacturing pathway, they want to get into whatever else we're going to put out there, because we're going to put it out there, yep. um, that we're going to be able to make that schedule work yep. so that we have a cohort model of students and the teachers that are going to follow them along so that if it's a four or five course pathway, We'll be able to squeeze that in one way or another. And, and, and I think as more colleges are doing these things, as more schools are doing, I think it will become something parents learn to expect. Like, I don't think now, I think now it's new and exciting and I don't know how it fits and I don't know what I do, but I do think you'll see more people who see this as a clear, I mean, we know people yeah. change their minds about what they want to do all the time, or they take that first one, get the sheep's head or whatever you said they have to cut into <laughs> it. Pass out and die. Not for me. Um, so we know people are changing, but, but clearly there are people who, who like this idea of this kind of path, targeted path that I'm on, and what then guidance does and what career counseling does is, is help tie all the other pieces yeah. that go along with that so that I'm directed, I have a vision, I have a path, mm -hmm. and parents start to feel more comfortable with it and the students start to feel more comfortable mm -hmm. with it. And it takes building, but you know, clearly it, it is the wave of the future now. Will it be the future five years from now? I'm not saying, but it's it's definitely something people will be more familiar with than you think that they will be. 
And I think to, to that point where there are only so many hours within the school day, right. if there are students that are interested in some of this work, we will have a full complement of courses for them next year as evening courses. Advanced Manufacturing 1, 2, and 3, Cybersecurity, and Computer Science. So these are courses that will be run um, either at uh, Hopedale High School, the Computer Science and Cybersecurity, or the Ed Hub for the Advanced Manufacturing. So those are blended learning courses that happen on, you know, um, once a week and then a couple Saturdays a semester. So Tammy, to your point, like, you know, it's, a, it's an elective kind of choice. We'll have alternatives for those folks that um, would be interested in something because they can't necessarily get it into their schedule, but they'd love to take a cybersecurity course. They can still do that. It's just a blended learning model uh, for credit, full credit, um, evening, and Saturday course. So we're trying to kind of fit in these options for everybody to make the flexibility there. And I, I mean, Rhode Island does not have true school choice, but the pathways have suddenly become our way. So Cumberland High School, that I, where I work, um, they're using their pathways to get students from other districts, and they are marketing it hard. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they have open houses just for their pathways. I think we have like five or six now. Um, so I think if we can develop that just in the right way, that can help us, you know, keep people and then um, potentially people will come just for that uh, pathway. So that it's really exciting um, if we can figure it out into the yeah. master schedule. Yeah. Yeah. And, and just to speak on uh, piggyback on what Tammy was saying, I also think guiding those eighth graders, you know, with with the guidance, saying that this would be a great idea for you. You know, I, I just think that guidance piece would be huge for the buy-in to this program um, as they slide into the high school, um, because I, I think some of these pathways are made for certain people and some they're not. But I think we need to reach out to those certain students that would benefit from this and make sure they are well aware of these pathways and they know what opportunities they have in that eighth grade where they could be going here there or anywhere after eighth grade I think that buy-in or that eighth grade you know day where they come in and they look at the things that are available I think that's going to be a big one um, my only other concern as I was listening is that um, all these concerns about the schedule, these will all be ironed out before the end of the school year. Is that correct? Like all of the fitting in of this, these. So students will know what they can select. Students will be ready. It won't be like an August thing where, you know, we have Letter to fill up. Home. Now you can add. Right. So my, that, that's my biggest concern is that, you know, whenever they start building their schedule for next, next year, the plan is already in place. So when they leave, there's already a. Uh, well, in terms of the, so for Project Lead the Way, we have that one course that mm -hmm. we're looking to offer. So that would be built into that. I mean, I do have another um, request for a teacher, mm -hmm. and I, I, I don't know where that's going to go in terms of the, the budget process. But uh, this one, and this one specifically, specifically will, will be already be in whatever student plan there is mm -hmm. for next year. I think what what's also really important is when we're thinking about pathways and career development we're looking at the electives that we have currently to see how does that align with real world mm -hmm. application um, and, and that's that's a conversation that we're having deep deep conversations with with staff members to see how does that look like and um, and how do we align that well um, because during the application process one of the pieces that we looked at was a 80 page document for the Massachusetts Central workforce blueprint labor market and what's interesting is that they um, there's a study to um, inform communities about what are those areas of greatest need in certain communities so central mass big the, the biggest wor uh, workforce needs for manufacturing biotechnology warehouse logistics um, and those are all things that we're trying to align our courses with so that when students walk out there, there's there's a there's a position for them and it's not well I studied so and so and it was fun but I don't know what I can do with this yeah now. and so. if I could build on that Mike just to help um, with that point because we need to move away from those right and and so some of the stuff that we've always done is is fun and it's you know it's it's engaging and that kind of thing but there are actually career readiness standards at all 
these types of courses should be anchored to. And we've got a couple of courses on the book, so to speak, that aren't anchored to anything. Mm -hmm. um, and we've just been kind of doing them for a long time, so we keep doing them. But So Mike is working with the four teachers that are doing these kind of career-focused courses to help them reset uh, and is going through, um, you know, a, kind of a review of the existing course, what the career development standards and workforce readiness standards are, and how to essentially align those to make sure that we're giving our students, you know, engaging and, and courses that they like and they enjoy, but they, they're also building a certain skill set that will make them ready, help them be ready for the workforce. And I think that that, um, you mentioned the blueprint, mm -hmm. uh, not our blueprint, but the state blueprint for career <laughs> development, and uh, a lot of blueprints around here, but, um, and those areas are hugely important because that's, you know, I've just, having met with Jeannie Hebert, we've got 400 openings, at a, uh, soon to have 400 openings in a biomed firm that's opening in the valley, they can't, they can't fill the positions. And a lot of the work that's being done on the kind of the floor, so to speak, is all artificial intelligence. So it's not even, we're looking for floor people. We're looking for people that can run the AI equipment and they she can't fill the positions. <clears throat> so, I mean, we've got a huge need. It's right in our backyard. <coughs> so we got to start shifting our work towards things that kids can actually use. So in terms of technology, I just, um, what I'd like to do is just a continuum of uh, subscriptions that we were able to um, bring to the high school um, from last year. So once again, the IXL math and ELA, virtual high school, which we've had the Naviance for guidance and career, Newzella New Pro. Uh, those are some of the pieces that I'd, we'd like to be able to hold on to and retain, and that's what's currently in the budget for, for the following year. Um, history, um, there's uh, a request for textbooks for one of the, the, the courses, street law course. Um, I believe that's 30 textbooks for that. It's an elective. Um, AP World History, there's a two-day workshop that uh, the AP World teacher wants to, to be able to, to go to and attend. Seems like it, the AP World always changes in terms of criteria, curriculum, um, so that is a part of that. Um, science, again, I just I tried to highlight just a few of the, the, the line items that were in there, but science, you're hearing that familiar vernier probe <laughs> sensors it's, again it's just a way to manipulate and look at data and um, a lot of that is is out there um, so they're just looking to add to uh, their supplies and instructional supplies Mike, we have a marine that was just to add on that, that, yeah. that was the physics course we were in yeah where the students had the uh, data collection on their phone yep it was pretty wild. They were they were essentially measuring. I think it was force or um, something like that. Yeah. And there was they had an app on their phone that was connected to the Vernier probe thing uh, on the car. I can tell them. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Not a strike of mine. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and the, it, it, they were literally like with the weight. They were kind of zipping the car down the lab table, and the kid was so it was collecting the data on his phone. Mm -hmm. it, it was just really cool to watch the kids interact with all the equipment and the data and then use that to finish up the lab they're working on. It was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we, we walked into the, that other course where um, they were doing stations. Uh, stations are great, but you know, part of the reason why he was doing stations and the rationale was he only had yeah. a specific yeah. amount of probes for students. So we were like, we we need to know this. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the, you know, the probes are. I mean, it's vital. It's important. <laughs> I don't think you know, it's six hundred, seven hundred dollars of a twenty-two million, twenty-four million dollar budget is is going to kill us. So, having that necessary information. Are we at twenty-eight now? <laughs> No? no. Yes, yes. <laughs> I just said it's not an oscillator or whatever. Oh, yeah, the oscilloscope. Um, but that is, that is something that uh, I think is really important. Um, the aquarium field trip, um, this is a new request. We have a marine, uh, an honors uh, marine bio course. It's an elective. Uh, it's going really well with a, a, a teacher who's taking that on. She's taking students over to the aquarium, uh, but she wanted to put that in as a uh, just to be able to pay for the transportation to Boston. Um, anatomy clay model, what I found fascinating about this was these teachers were at a Mass Insight professional development, two day or three day workshop in the summer. Somebody mentioned these clay models, that they're reusable clay, they're able to go put this on to 
um, a skeleton system and they're able to replicate or model muscles and various organs. Um, so that is something that the anatomy physiology course uh, is looking at. Mass hanger set, it's a physics uh, component. Um, so those are just some of the, the, the smaller items um, or larger items in the science world. Uh, but with the Vernier, or, uh, I'm sorry, with the Project Lead the Way, there's going to be a lot more science supplies that could be embedded into ninth grade bio classes. I mean, they could share those, those, those resources as well. Um, ELA, I know this, we're going through a literacy curriculum. Um, I put it in as the $30,000. I believe that's what we have the middle school as well. Yes, that's all part of the literacy. Correct. That's March the, 3rd, the we'll go through all Yes, that. so I just, I put that in. Yep. Um, the ELA folks wanted to um, have a little bit more um, money allocated for supplemental uh, resources and, tech and, um, and, and other materials for ninth and 10th grade. There's a double-sided portable whiteboard that they were looking to, to put in some classrooms to be able to have a little more visual um, presentations that are going on. Um, math, um, I, in terms of furniture, I, know, I mean, I, this is, I hesitate to bring this up just because it's, it's furniture, but we have original 1969 desks that you have to squeeze yourself into. There has been, um, the, but prior to me, the, the principal would buy or would ask for a set of desks and, and chairs. The math department is looking to be a little more collaborative in nature, have a little more flexible seating, have rectangular tables with free chairs where students can go and sit at a desk and collaborate and communicate. If you see the, the Twitter feeds and the pictures, you know, Mr. Rowe is doing a lot of stuff and he's, they're literally taking a, a desk and moving it together to be able to put, it, it is an added expense of seven grand, but they felt like that was, that was important to, to be able to put that there. Uh, the competitions, the district, state, and DECA membership, that's coming from our, our new um, mm -hmm. marketing and business teacher that we were able to support for this year and the math intervention specialist. He is sending seven students to um, the state DECA uh, competition in Boston. Um, and kids are having a phenomenal time with that when we talk about real world application, problem solving. They competed in front of um, a, well. a forum that's and that's they're doing team. really yeah. well with, with, yep. with, with that. And it's, it's all from you know, marketing and hospitality and, mm -hmm. and business. Um, so that is something that we did not have any money for for this year. Um, but that's what he identified for memberships and competition. Can so I just cut there for a minute? Um, I think this is, I mean, it sounds like when you talk about like the fun, a fun thing, um, when, you know, Alexa is a senior this year, and um, when you're going through that college process and the applications and all these scholarship applications, one of the line items that they ask is um, academic awards or based awards or something. And so I think this is one of those things that would count. They, they mention uh, DECA, they mention FBLA, um, those kinds of things. And so I think we really need to expand in that area because, um, you know, when you, when you have a district of 105 graduating class and you need to expand your horizons to, to rise to the top there. So I think, you know, it's, it's like a, you know, something fun that kids can do. It's an activity. But when you're filling out those college applications and you have a whole section blank because it will, it actually says on there, your National Honor Society doesn't count. This doesn't count. So these are the things they're looking for. And, and currently we don't have a lot to offer in that section of the application. Sure. So yeah. um, I think makes sense. it's good to know yeah. beyond us. No, absolutely. Um, so art, tech, music, I tried to break it up a little bit in terms of some of the courses. So the video, um, the media lab, um, he's looking at essentially to, to, to finalize his lighting and sound to be able to have a complete studio. Um, you know, we're working on tables and the furniture piece, but he said if I can get the uh, background paper, which is just very colored background paper for, for video, floor stand for acoustic panels, the three light studio kit. He said w w within the last three years, he was able, he's able to build a, a really nice studio. 
um, for for the for the for the kids. And you know, we're still doing PBS and we're still putting out videos. And there's going to be a video coming out in two weeks that we're going to celebrate uh, something else that we're we're working on. Um, it's all coming from the, our video lab. Um, you know, last year they were looking at camcorder camcorders and video cameras, and um, we were able to s s um, help support that. Uh, music. So this is uh, aside from marching band. Uh, this is some of the courses that he's offering, um, Mr. Schaefer. So at least own tuba, um, percussion supplies, uh, wind ensemble, concert, chorus, repertoire, uh, at least own um, sax. So those are just a few things that uh, he felt he needed for his courses, specific so, courses. So the tuba is for two years, or, is it, or this is the second year of the tuba? Did we do it? Does it yeah. That's okay. Uh, in terms of robotics and manufacturing, again, we're looking at that manufacturing pipeline and what can we do there. Um, Dr. Falco mentioned that we have a manufacturing one, two, and three um, outside of the school, but we're also looking to, to be able to build and supplement what we're doing in the building. Um, we're looking at a level one certification in manufacturing as well. So we, we are- In-house, right? In-house, in yes. Yep. So we are looking, that will be supported through the outside, mm -hmm. uh, through EdHub. But we're looking for a CNC machine, um, which is that $2,000 XCARF complete kit, um, some power tools, and then the classroom starter kit, booster kit, and smart motor. And then the in the graphics, I accidentally put it there, but the game element kit, that's all part of the uh, competitive ro robotics programs um, that we're looking to do. And if I can just add one other piece, that the grant we're working on for the middle school and the career exploration work. Uh, which is going to, uh, should, should be awarded, going to give kids the opportunity to explore the career pathways that the high school is offering. So we had to build those first and then back it into the middle school so we knew what to focus on. Um, uh, both uh, Ms. Kurt and uh, Mr. Dudek have their tech teachers or STEM teachers partnering together. So part of this actual grant will be an opportunity for them to get together and plan a secondary curriculum so that students First of all, both teachers are in kind of lockstep with what they're offering as far as the robotics piece and some of that artificial intelligence in each building. But we're actually will be creating a coherent 612 pipeline for that. So um, I think this is a really exciting place because both principals and the teachers are partnering in that space to pull this all together. So there'll be some coherence and alignment. Our graphics department that we're looking at um, offering other opportunities, other skills, so vinyl, uh, lettering and cutting uh, machine so that we can look at uh, banners, creating banners, looking at vinyl lettering for water bottles and so forth. So um, that's a, to me, is an inexpensive piece of equipment that will really enhance graphics in terms of what that looks like. Um, we did a site visit at a, a local school and the kids were having vinyl designs on their lacrosse helmets and their water bottles and it, it was just really neat to see it was a 3d image um, and that took a lot of time to be able to do and create some creative elements but they were able to do that um, health and wellness um, the, the big piece that they're looking at is a it's an online curriculum um, ed program uh, it's a fitness performance ed for health and wellness components um, they vetted it out, they were piloting it for this year, and that's something that they uh, want to be able to offer uh, essentially as a hybrid to what they're doing uh, within their classrooms. Um, and then foreign language is strictly just curriculum. Um, the SOMOS curriculum is, um, as it was uh, explained to me, is really looking at immersion, so language immersion. So they, they, they stated it's more comprehension input. Um, and I think that's really needed when we think about languages and the, the, the four domains to language acquisition. It, to me, it's all about immersion and it's not just reading a textbook. So they're looking to really enhance what foreign language looks like. We have a new um, Spanish teacher um, that's really taken that on. And they, they're also looking at uh, the national conference, which she went on two years ago. And um, from that, they were able to build portfolio, portfolio assessments in their Spanish department. Uh, as where she was, and she would like to be able to um, take the three um, foreign language teachers next year to be able to go to that conference. So those are just some of the items. Um, the last piece was just the new staff member. Um, 
as you recall, last year we were looking at two staff members. We were able to get one teacher, so we were able to do that math intervention slash business marketing teacher, uh, which took a little time to get, but we did. Um, and the new staff member that we're looking at for next year, what I'm proposing is to have an ELA intervention specialist slash humanities teacher with some electives that um, we could rebuild or build back into um, our curriculum that was lost a couple years ago when we when we lost a, our fifth English teacher. Uh, again, I think the rationale and the vision behind that is the more sections we're able to add, the more opportunities we have for our kids. We have some supports and interventions that we can build into place now with math and ELA, but it's also taking students out of um, study halls. And with that one teacher from last year added back um, our study halls are a little smaller where students can now just be in one classroom where students where teachers can collaborate in PLC again my goal is to possibly just eliminate study halls but that's going to take a, a phase of, of some time and resources to be able to do that uh, and this is just one step closer to to being able to to do all of all of the above Can I ask if, do we have um so the, the new materials on these presentations are included in the figures of phase two on something we received earlier. Yes. Are, do we have numbers broken out per building or per uh, more grade level, I guess? Is, is that somewhere? They're organized uh, by their yeah. function code. Yep, right. Uh, so yeah. Oh, the function, my so favorite function. function. <laughs> well, if you, if, if, you, if you scroll through that list, it, it basically starts with Millville Elementary School, and it goes in order by school. So they're, they're grouped together. You would just need to. Is there to a total per function code at the end of all the fun that function no. code? No. Okay. I'm 405. have to take out the handy dandy I'm 405. <laughs> I can, but the front. I'm just wondering if it was in here already. The, remember we, we did the summary for each of the lines, each of the function lines, and then we had the detail behind it? I think it is. I, I, no, I no, thought we, that we No, did the, the front page, the front page was the things this that one. we changed. Yeah, but I thought that we yeah. had. No, it doesn't have the. I know that it doesn't have like the total of for each school. Um, no, but for each each fun, each line curriculum. No. no. Yeah. But gosh, I thought for sure you, we had that, and behind it was the detail. But. Okay. I just was wondering. I I started to kind of do this in my head, and I thought it might already be somewhere. <laughs> and I we have a PDF too. If it was an Excel, you could always <laughs> add up the column. Yeah, like I thought we had. Mm hmm. Was this the detail? But it's a PDF, so we could. So we didn't include that. Yeah. Because I wanted to. Yeah. We could. I'm sure. Okay, from year over year. So we didn't include that. Okay. Yeah, I was just going to say, Tammy, we can do that. Tammy, I can. I was just, I mean, as I was looking at the numbers here, I was like trying to kind of think about how much it was, and then I realized we had something. Yeah, sure. I can, so I can give you the. the information however you like and I could also send you the Excel files and oh, you could Tara said, yeah. manipulate them however you like. <laughs> Tara's the she queen of Excel. I, guess I figured that's why you didn't give us Excel so we could delete or change that's, lines. That is why. <laughs> but I, never I, share I will add <laughs> just just one quick memo with if we're looking at line items so our um, our video media line items yeah. were it, they were a placeholder. The, the money is still the same, <coughs> but the items were from last year. Um, that teacher wasn't available for me to, to be able to go through the supply list. I mean, we do have an updated list of what he was looking for, but at the time of the budget okay. process, he wasn't available for me to have a conversation about what that looks like. So if you're going through the line items, you're going to say, oh, there's the, the Canon Rebel cameras in there and that video camera for 3,000, Sony camcorder for 3,000 is still in there. And, but that was a placeholder for the, the, new, the new items for this year, for the following year. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So his list is shorter this year than it was last year <laughs> and less money. I don't know. It still has the X -car. Well, these are, these are just some of the main, X -car. main pieces. Yeah. But, I'm just looking at it. Yeah. We have a little, the little cutout of the Canon compared to the three things that he, that 
Well, there's yes. more. There's additional there's items. More. Oh, okay. There, there oh, that's, that's in the list. Yeah. That's it. That's in the. the I see. The lovely document. Yeah. Thank you. There's more. There's always more. <laughs> All right, any other questions? Yes, go ahead, Aaron. Um, the new staff you have down as one teacher, five sections, um, but you did reference this year's math intervention. So just curious, how many sections is that teacher, the new teacher? We only have one marketing class, right? So there's, um, I believe there's one marketing class and two business classes, those or are, so two marketing, one new. business. It's, okay. it's either it's one or the other and the rest is intervention and the rest are intervention courses Thank and we'll look I, we're servicing about 25 to 30 students in that per Thank class you. total for the three the classes 25 kids uh no for the math intervention, intervention. oh okay i yeah. was like yeah. <laughs> Don't say that out loud in front of elementary. <laughs> three classes with 25 people, 25 people like, something needs to be adjusted <laughs> What else? And so, so once again, I'm sorry. Freshmen and sophomores in the intervention. Yeah, Freshmen and sophomores. Right. Yeah, and we're, we're looking at the, that star data. Don't need intervention. Well, we're trying to close those gaps <laughs> before the kids yeah. go into to test. Yeah. 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 So and, and that would that would be the idea, similar to on the the humanities ELA piece, yeah. is that we would look to do the ELA intervention with ninth and tenth grade, but also be able to. Again, I think we have to look at what the schedule looks like, but. Is there a possibility of, of entertaining a, another humanities elective um, with that teacher? Um, I, there, there's still some questions about what those potential electives could look like, depending on who that teacher is that we can, that we can get into our our, build, our building. Excuse me. I know it's only two hundred and eighty dollars, but the school supplies calculators, or the students have to have it as part of the supplies they have to scientific oh, the scientific calculator so um, the Texas TI 30x which are not expensive calculators. they're not um, we, we try to provide calculators to students that just can't afford them gotcha. um, the scientific scientific calculator the, the one the graphic graph yeah. the TI 8991 yeah. um, we do ask families to pay for that if, if they don't we, we have some and I think mr. Rowe actually still quote leases them for a year um, and is able to you know purchase additional calculators with that money but those are the simple simple calculators yeah what what do you have for retirees this year do you know? at the high school yeah um, so we have one um, foreign language teacher yeah, I think that's so we'll just replace that that, that's still going to be three high school so we'll still have three foreign language yep that's a proposal that we'll have three foreign language teachers I think that's it I that believe yeah. I believe so at this point yep well. thanks Thank guys you. enjoy your night Thank you both. things happening in both those schools Exciting. Well, it's interesting. You know, I'm, it's interesting you said that because I, as you listen to these, I mean, you can actually you can hear the work, yep. right? You can yep. see the work happening. It's not just well, we need textbooks and this right. and that. It's right. like you can see it well, connected sure to, yeah, yeah. yeah. which is really exciting. I said I thought um, music. Oh, and Mr. Shepard, these are coming together. Music. Um, do you have the clicker there? Yeah. Oh, perfect. Okay. Yep. He might be. I'll try to keep up with you. Awesome. Can't see it. Uh, so I'll just highlight a few of the, the bigger changes. Um, for middle school and under contract music, uh, there's a, a pretty sizable increase. We've had a very tough year so far with repairs here at the middle school. Um, luckily, the high school has not. So we're playing a little bit of uh, <coughs> uh, moving instruments uh, as they need it here at the middle school. but. Uh, the repairs that are needed here at the middle school are more expensive, so that's what that increases for. Um, like I said, I was I was fortunate this year that I could offset and, and help out Mr. Marcotte and Mr. Morrell. Um, another change uh, for high school music uh, transportation. I just totally ruined it. 
500. Okay. Um, so the last year, I'd asked for uh, money for the Winter Guard to go to Winter Guard uh, International Regionals, which is at Salem High School. Um, the director felt like with this year's team that, that it was better not uh, brought there. They actually did go to a competition two weeks ago at Salem High School, um, but it was not Winter Guard Regionals. Uh, her three-year plan has them going there. Uh, it's just a totally different uh, level of competition, and, and she wants to make sure that they're at a place where they'll be able to walk in and be competitive right away. So I removed that for next year's transportation costs, um, which is why the decrease in that. Um, uh, the biggest change is in the supplies category. Uh, supplies takes care of any extracurricular activity, uh, specifically for you know, marching band, winter guard, um, as it pertains to writing of the show. The writing of the show has, has continued uh, to go up. So these people that we, that we get to custom write our music and our visual show has gone up and there, that's where the increase really lies. Like there's a uh, writing of fall show custom arrangement in there um, that was not in there last year. I was able to reduce the amount of uh, marching band um, materials like flags and tarps. Uh, the Music Association has been helping out with that a lot this year in particular. Um, so that is the, the biggest increase uh, on my budget for that total uh, department line item. Um, and I'll come back to the Music Association a little bit later. But uh, like I said, just the, the writing of this music, uh, and we use this music for the fall show, but then we also have these same people write for our winter shows as well. where it says it went up a thousand dollars but then there's a fall three thousand dollars new so it's those are two different fall shows well so there's there's different facets to the fall show there's the wind arrangement um, which is the new one that's on here and then there's the percussion arrangements which are, uh, are the one that went up okay. so yep I actually know what you're talking about <laughs> <laughs> does anybody else other than and then if there's no questions about the budget I can go on to extracurricular numbers anybody on the this first one I'm just looking so Todd the overall For increase here is from 70,250 to 72,300. Yes. So about two grand. Yeah. Yeah. So this does not include the item, the items that Mr. Dudek just had. Correct. No. That's no. because that was classroom time. This right. is right. Yeah. okay. Okay. All right. Um, extracurricular enrollment um, for the most part this year was was a, a step forward and especially in a few areas uh, like high school open choir went significantly up this year um, jazz ensemble which is typically a set number uh, mr. Marcotte did take on a few additional instruments this year um, March man this year was uh, four students larger than last year um, the biggest change this year is we didn't have enough sign-ups to field the winter percussion team uh, I think it was an aberration I don't think that's a, a trend that's going to happen I think that they'll be back next year um, but to go out and compete you have to have a certain number and we we like I said we were short um, I to be honest I think that some of our our older members um, wanted the celebration to last a little bit longer <laughs> this winter and didn't really want to jump into a new uh, another activity so um, not to say, you know, there won't be a celebration next year, but I think that the, the younger kids are really driving the desire to, to get that team back next year. Todd, is the, no, I don't mix apples and oranges, but the marching band, these 76 kids, are these the students or some combination that are going to Washington, D.C. in May? Yeah, not all of those 76 are going. Some combination of Yeah, yep. 
Yeah, we'll probably end up marching um, in the parade with about 75 kids, but they're not all the same. Okay. What I did is I opened up that specific parade to all high school musicians, oh, um, whether or not they're in the fall march man, just so some of these students have the opportunity to march in a big parade. That's awesome. So. And then that encompassed with the eighth graders that will join yep. you down there. Yep. User fees. Um, one side note about user fees. Um, I had a conversation with Dr. DeFalco and Mr. Ehrenworth uh, back in December about user fees. And they had just said, you know, it, it might be interesting to see a comparison of, of other user fees in the area. So I reached out to several other programs that have competitive groups because there's a lot of programs in our media area that don't go out and compete. They just have, you know, they might have an after school jazz band, but that's all it does. So I reached out to several schools, and it's, it's very, very mixed. Um, there are schools that are uh, four times higher than us. Uh, there are schools that have none, schools that, that fall in right underneath us. And these, like I said, these are all comparable in the sense that they all have competing marching bands, competing winter guard, those type of groups. So it's really, uh, I mean, uh, Mr. Aaron, you saw it yesterday. Yeah, it's the numbers were all over the place. And I think we just decided that we're going to leave user fees where they are. What is band user fee? 140. Uh, 140. One of them was For like each thing you do or just for each activity. I know. The lack of the, the lack of consistency was super was, interesting yeah, across the yeah. I mean, some are huge to... and some are some were double R's, some yeah. one was 500 and some odd dollars like 580. Yeah. For, for everything was, or every was, thing they did. For the Philly. music for their music fee. That was, but, that was just but, for one activity. I yeah. Yeah. Was, one activity. King Phil, yeah. Yeah. So is there a maximum though? Cuz yeah, like a family cap? All of these well the schools that had user fees all had some family cap. And do we have a family cap? We do. We do. Which is what? 600 the same as our sports does that mix in with the sports yeah yeah yep so you just said king philip does that include their camp is that no because we don't we no. the school so, doesn't pay for our camp parents right, do right no they go away they do they actually go to a camp out in the cape and that's a totally separate fee from they paid separate from that's in our yeah, five didn't we beat so. them we did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let us get I'm that just on the saying. Let us, let us get that I think we beat him twice, if I remember. We beat more than that, the two that I saw. Yeah. Just, I'm just putting it out there. Yeah. Yeah. Now, do we have a system in place where students that qualify for waivers yeah. are automatically waived? Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. Or do yes. they have to apply? No. No, free or reduced lunch students uh, are waived for user fees. For sports also. And yeah. Are there any hardship that exemptions for students who might not be able to afford it? Families that might not be able to afford it, even though they don't qualify for free or reduced lunch. I know that that at the high school, uh, Mr. Ducharme will work with families. You know, if they can't pay the hundred forty dollars, he'll work with them to pay it over time. Mm -hmm. um, but and this isn't just for band. I'm talking. No, about right, right, right. No, he does the same thing. Yeah, yeah across the board. Thank and you. oh, sorry. Uh, the the last uh, page I put in there. Um, was just, I, I don't know if this has been shared before. Um, this is what BMMA, uh, the, the money that they actually use to, to support the music department. Um, a lot of the things on this list are the other half of what's in my budget. So for, for like the show writing, um, I put in three thousand dollars. It's actually six thousand dollars total, and and music, <laughs> yeah. we're in the wrong field, people. I know. <laughs> Apparently, I am too. <laughs> um, uh, music Association will pay the other part of that. Um, uh, last year, they purchased us a new instrument. Uh, they purchased a vibraphone, um, and so it just it's. A, it's I a, do not, <laughs> but I could guess. <laughs> It's just a breakdown of, of everything that they do to, you know, the, the trucking for our tractor trailer, the trucking for the Winter Guard, um, all the different ways that they, you know, offset and, and support the music department. If they're listening, thank you mm -hmm. yeah. very much. <laughs> and we just wanted to put it's this in. It's a very in. heavy lift. It, yeah, it, is. it is. We very... just wanted to include this to show, again, that this is not all funding coming from the towns or right. from mm -hmm. our budget there's a, a lot of other sources of revenue and the music association is tr tremendous yeah well comparing this this is 18 to 19 that you gave us yeah so it's half of the budget that we give that that we are funding if you think about it mm -hmm. we were at it's over that 79 right yeah it's more than half of what we put into it mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And, you know, just, I know we've said this before, in particular during these conversations, but help, you know, helping the community see these numbers is so important because we don't just live on, we can't just function the district on the, the general local budget. There's so much more that goes into it between this type of work, the athletic boosters work, all of the grants that we put in. I mean, it's it's more than just what we what we see from the local perspective. Mm-hmm. Any questions? No. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And that's it for this evening's cost center uh, manager presentations. All right. Sure. Anybody questions in general? We get it better now. Mm-hmm. What are, oh, Thursday's a rack. Yep. And then next Tuesday, we have our next workshop, which is all of our ed tech from. Um, all of the different programs and things that you heard about in the past couple of presentations, the IXL, the VMath, Myon, all of those different um, components, and um, technology. Mm-hmm. Can we break it down by um, schools? We Is can organize that however the committee would like. I'm happy to put it together. I, I'm just curious on some of the technology and what's Definitely. used. And you're going to yeah. give us usage, right? Yeah. Yes, we're going to look at impact good. usage, and we can do it by school for sure. That'd be great. Yes. Yeah, I think by school would be good for that. Yeah, because, I mean, I'm sure some school, grades are, some grades are more prone. I'm just curious. So the, that makes sense. you're referring to the usage, correct? Yes, okay. the usage. Yeah. Because the, cost, the costs are, many of them are, are district. Are district. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Right. But mm-hmm. we can look at that. But I would school. like to know that, too, because... Sometimes it is cheaper by district, so it really doesn't yeah, matter. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I would be curious to know that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we'll have oh, the cost. Down, break yeah. We will take care of it. I guess you could split absolutely. those costs from the district by the percentage so of dance. use by the schools. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right, anything else? Mm-hmm. Um, entertain a motion to adjourn. So, so moved. Second. All in favor. Aye, 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 aye. aye. <laughs> Thank you, Jesse.